himself and outline, outline their vision and priorities for the city. We have two candidates running for the two-year term sitting here. There's four running for the four-year term, two going to be speaking tonight, and two for the mayor. Uh, the guidelines we're going to be following, the same as last time, be respectful to others, no personal attacks. There will be no questions from the audience or questions from the candidates to the audience. Candidates and public will not interrupt when candidates are speaking. No alcohol or under the influence of alcohol or drugs. After each candidate has had their five minutes to speak, the event will be concluded. And if anyone violating the above mentioned will be asked to leave. Immediately or the law enforcement will be called. Mm -hmm. And the first one on our list is going to be Mike. And the stairs over to the side here, so you don't have to kill yourself. A very, <clears throat> a very thankful for the opportunity to be part of our electoral process and view. Thank you, Diane, for the invitation to speak today. For those of you who may not know who I am, my name is Michael Adrava. I've lived in Buell since 2008. I'm married to Laura Swanson, daughter of Kurt Cherry Swanson. I'm the father of seven children, and five still reside in the line group. I graduated from the little town called Laporte in 1993. From there, I graduated from Northwest Technical College in Lahina in 1995. The degree, the degree in communication. In 1999, I had the opportunity to become a heavy equipment operator, and that career has carried me through this present day. My wife, as, as a stay-at-home mom, raising our kids while working long hours. <laughs> my wife is a stay-at-home mom, raising our kids while working long hours during the construction season. I can't think of any other small town on the range that I would love to be part of more, and that's why I'm standing here today. Buell is a city with fewer than a thousand residents. The mayoral council of government was derived so that people like me can run for office and help govern the city. You don't need a political education or to hobnob with lifelong politicians or to effectively operate to effectively operate a city like Buell. You don't need breadth in high places. You need to care about how and where your tax dollars are being spent to care and to care about your neighbors. We have some great amenities in Buell. A curling club that needs some attention with its wonderful senior center, churches, taverns, a restaurant, a gas station, water company, and a town hall. We have boards like BETA, a library board, the Elf Class Reunion Committee, Planning and Zoning, and we used to have a beautification committee. Now that the senior center is up to code, I'd love to see some attention given to some of the more rundown buildings, like our curling club, and it would be great to have more people volunteer so we can have a beautification committee again. Speaking of our community minor boards, we have our rec board. They have regrouped and pulled together some amazing events, like the Buell Independence Day festivities. I've gladly contributed my personal time and materials to the rec board and try to give Buell a renewed sense of community. I stand here before you today because I believe the people of this town should have a choice. No one should run, a poll, run unopposed. And as we've seen with our first primary year for city, years for city council, the people do not feel their voices are being heard. And that's what I want to change. I want your voices to be just as important as the mayors or the city councilors or the clerks. I believe that we can manage our current obstacles proper people in office. In 2020, 598 people registered to vote in Buell. Then, in July 2021, 298 people signed a petition with a simple request to postpone the destruction of our ball fields and put it to a vote. That is half of our registered voters. They should have let us decide if we wanted added infrastructure to keep our ball fields. 
our, our elected officials seem to have forgotten that they work for us, and that's why we need a new city council. It can't be the solution to a problem we've created. There's been reckless spending in the last four years, and what we need to do now is to look at the books, evaluate where we can make cutbacks and save money. There are many people living in Buell who survive on fixed income. We can't afford to pay higher taxes and higher utility bills every year. That needs to be taken into account for tackling million dollar projects. We need to discern between wants and needs. Once again, you can't be the solution to a problem you've created. What Buell has cannot be bought with money. We're a small town, small town people. That's why we live where we live. We cherish what we have, most of all of our, ch most of all our children, and that's what I want. I want my kids to live here when they get old. I want to give them a reason to stay in view. If we take care of what we have, and we our means, I don't see this being entertaining. Once again, my name is Michael Drago, and I thank you for your consideration. that don't know me, my name is Carol Astari, and I'm running for the Buell City Council Special Election seat. I've been a resident of Buell for 60 plus years. I raised my three daughters and son, and four grand, I've now raised my grandchildren, but I have four grandchildren. I've worked at the First National Bank in Buell for 15 plus years. I previously was on the school board and the city council. Besides that, I'm a member of the Buell Public Library, Buell Kinney Senior Center. I'm also active as a uh, volunteer for numerous events and projects in and around Buell. I was involved in the beautification efforts of Buell within new banners and entrance signs. I also assisted with the planning and preparation for the much needed renovation to our senior center. In the past, I helped organize numerous self-class reunions and 4th of July parades. I'm running for this seat because the progress over the last four years has set Buell up for success in the long term. <clears throat> I've seen firsthand what a dedicated mayor, council, and city staff can do. A few accomplishments that come to mind are replacing much of the old infrastructure that was in despair, disrepair, partnering with the city of Chisholm on law enforcement and be able to provide high level of emergency services between the fire department and the city's new partnership with Essentia, with Essentia Health EMS. A few projects that I would like to continue working on if I'm elected include a new multi-purpose fire ambulance, public works, and city hall under one roof. What many may not realize is Buell has seven different buildings between these departments that all have high utility, insurance, maintenance, and operational costs due to their age. This project would save the taxpayers and the city countless dollars in the long run. Additionally, our water tank needs to be rebuilt along with infrastructure expansion in the South Industrial Park. That will boost the economic development for the city. I also want to acknowledge and thank our dedicated employees who go above and beyond for this city. The city of Buell is very fortunate to have Trent, Lyle, Owen, Diana, and Ryan. I also want to thank our fire department volunteers for all their work and dedication, along with all who have helped me at this project with the Senior Center. Thank you. I believe Mayor Clarich and the Council work hard to put the needs of Buell first, and they deserve our thanks and appreciation. I believe I am the best candidate for this seat based on my current and past experience 
along with my continued involvement and dedication to Buell. I would appreciate your vote on November 8th. Thank you. Next we would have um, Randy Towner, but he's not going to speak again because he introduced himself last time. He's here tonight. He's just going to sit here and visit. So next we'll ask Denise to come up. First of all, I want to thank you for coming out tonight to meet the candidates running for your city council and mayor positions. If you don't know me, my name is Denise Keeley, and I am running for one of the open seats in the city council. I grew up and graduated here in Buell. I always knew someday that I wanted to be on the council. It's in my blood, following the steps of my dad, Dennis, who was both the mayor and the council back in the day. I am currently working for the city of Chisholm. I have 35 years in a union position throughout my career. I feel my current job does give me the experience needed to help make decisions for your city as a counselor. The people behind the council are the ones that work in the office every day. We see and hear plenty. In my current position, I work every day with the enterprise funds and their budgets. I have a very good understanding of the budgets and how things work in the government setting. I would not be new to all of this. I personally do not have a short-term goal or a personal invested interest in becoming a counselor other than I live in Buell and it's been a want of mine to be on the council and to serve you, the citizens of Buell. When I say a personal invested interest, I mean I don't own a business in town, but I want to see the businesses that we do have survive and maybe new businesses find a home in Buell and keep those tax dollars right here in our own town. Business generates revenue and converts to local taxes, feeding the local economy to create a better business within our community. As an example, a building that others have talked about, we have here in town, I call it my second home in the winter. It's the community center slash curling club, where I am the treasurer of the curling club. The building could be used for so many more get-togethers if it had upgrades and was, and was promoted more. Think of the people this building alone could bring into town, and that helps our businesses that we already have in Buell. We need to make it marketable to want people to use it. I know that being on the council will never be an easy job. I know tough decisions will need to be made along with the everyday business. We won't all be raising our hands and agreeing with everybody, but we hopefully will debate the issues and result with the meaningful direction. When you, the public, choose an electric elected official, you're putting your trust and confidence in us to act in the public's best interest. Both the power to regulate and the power of the public purse are weighty responsibilities. Um, weighty responsibilities. One of the things I think is important for both the part of the elected official and the community is educating oneself about the issues facing our community. This happens by talking to the public reading relevant reports and studies, reading diligent, being diligent as a counselor, not only coming to the meetings, but coming prepared. This also applies to audience members that attend. I'm running because I believe I am a good candidate for you and our city, and your city. I am not afraid to use my voice, nor give my opinion. And if you know me, you know that is a true statement. <laughs> Understanding how government works is vital to this position. A counselor needs to know the role he or she should and should not play. I work it every day, so yes, I feel I do understand this. I'm not running because I think the city is falling apart or the past or current council has done a bad job. I think we live in a pretty good community and I believe that, I, and I believe that council and also important city workers are a huge part of that. I want Buell to continue to be a place where families love raising their families and the rest of us want to retire in. I will be here to listen to you and bring any of your concerns to the appropriate people, appropriate people in the city. Good communication is the key. Please get out November 8th, if you haven't already, and vote for the ones you think can keep Buell going in that right direction. I hope you believe my values and my background are what you want to see as one of your next city councilors. Again, thank you to the senior citizens for having us here tonight. If you vote for me, thank you. If you don't, thank you too. 
just being here shows you care enough to meet the rest of us. Thank you. The next one would be Stuart, but I didn't hear from him, so I'm assuming he's not coming. And I'll ask John if you want to come up now. Yeah. Hi, my name is John Marcus, and I'm seeking one of the positions at large. Um, I'm originally from Kinney, but I attended school here and graduated from here in 1969. Uh, I participated in football, baseball. I skated for the Hibbing Flyers hockey team back in the 80s. When our son was that age, I was a little league baseball coach here in Beale for many years. I attended Masabi Junior College, St. Cloud State, Bemidji University, and earned a, earned a degree in industrial engineering. I've been married to my wife, Mary Millage, third generation Buell Bill, for 47 years. We have two grown kids and four grandkids. My work experience, uh, I was an electrician in the mines at the Sherman Mine and at Hibbing Tech before and, and I, when there was an opening here in Buell, I applied for it and was in, uh, got picked for the utility department. I retired in 2014 after 28 years working for Buell. And I'm also a master electrician. I also own my own small business, JM Monument. I served on a council for six years and actually I was here I was on a council in 1985 and 86 for a year and a half, and that's when the opening here in the city came and I uh, applied for being a lineman here. I've served, on, I've served on a central sanitation sewer district commission, the Buell Planning and Zoning, Buell Economic Development, the Buell Library Board, and CBDG. The council is working on the budget for next year and it looks like property taxes will go up. Health insurance costs, gasoline wages, heating costs are increasing. But most of all, in 2023, Buell will be hit with a $70,000 decrease towards the levy due to a fiscal disparity calculation from the county. It's complicated and nothing that the city did uh, involves this. Basically, at $70,000 would be subtracted from our levy, and now taxpayers must absorb it. Um, it's really a complicated issue that it's hard to even understand. I am for new housing, making home improvements. This brings so much needed revenue to help offset the expenses to operate our town. Pop property taxes pay the bill. Good housing attracts people to the community and younger families with children, which adds to the enrollment of schools, and retired folks can participate in activities at our own senior center right here. I am for a recreation of all ages. I mean, Buell offers a little something for everyone. We have swimming at the beach. Uh, we have a couple other pits that are used for fishing and, uh, and recreation. The senior center. We have disc golf, Masaba Trio, playground at the park, butcher ball courts, two skating rinks, warming shack, and we're trying to develop a new winter slide hill, um, which will be on the east end of town over here. I support our curling club. I was an avid curler for 30 years. I helped build and seek funds for our curling club, you know, back in the early 80s, 1981. Um, I've also, I helped out making the ice at the skating rink and cleaning the ice in the last three, four years. I'm proud to say that I've been on a council that has improved the city with new infrastructure and roads. Our utilities are well maintained and we found an occupant owner for the Buell School. We have good solid employees and our yearly audits are clean. 
Our law enforcement and ambulance relationships are strong. However, there is always more work to be done. Our water tank needs some expensive upgrades. The fire and ambulance street departments and the upgrades of these facilities are, are needed. City Hall is a historic building, but it's crumbling. We need to address this. Our playground park could use some more pieces of playground equipment. And we need a few more streets that needs to uh, be repaved. Um, these projects require assistance and funding from various government agencies. Having good relations with our elected appointed officials is helpful to secure necessary funds. If, I, if elected, I want to continue on a path of growth for a small community to make you a safe and welcome community for everyone. anybody should run unopposed. Um, to me, that's not an election. Elections are about choice, and that's why I'm standing here. Um, I was born and raised on the Iron Range. I've traveled all over the place, and every time I come home, this is my home. Um, a lot of people complain about the cold. I have a red beard. I was made for the snow. This, this, is, where, this is where I belong. Um, in 2006, I met my wife, Jessica, which probably everybody in this room knows, and I fell in love, and this is where we decided to raise our family. Buell is amazing. We love it here. Um, I'm a nine-year member with Millwright's Local 1348. Um, I've served on Buell City Council going on two years now. Today, I am here not as an elected official, not as a candidate, but as a member of our community. A husband, a father, a neighbor. I could speak of securing funding for city projects, public safety, or taxes, but I believe we are all tired of hearing all the political talk. Everywhere I go, I hear about it, from my radio to my TV, every, everywhere. Um, all of these things are extremely important but they are formalities. And regardless of who is elected to this council, regardless who sits here as mayor, work will continue on these topics. And we will be successful because we are Buell. Today, I would like to talk about our community. Buell is an amazing community filled with amazing people, just like everybody in this room. Since the day it was founded, Buell has had a rich history filled with many exciting times. The adventure and discovery in its early years, which I love that idea. I think I should have been born then. Um, to earning itself the title of the hot spot of Minnesota when everything west of Buell became a dry territory, which I'm sure has interesting stories to go along with. I've heard so many great stories of amazing events from people in town. Some of them may be hard to believe, and they probably are just that, stories. But amazing. Um, one thing that connects all of these stories, and I hear it from everybody, is they happened in the good old days. Every everybody says it. Back in the good old days. I would like to share my favorite story from Buell's history. This comes from a, a book titled "A Town Is Born: The History of Buell." It's written on April 19th, 1918. A great liberty parade was staged in Buell with some 3,000 participating. The band led the parade staged to support our boys in Europe. The unity among the citizenry was extraordinary. The unity among the citizenry was extraordinary. This is the community I imagine.
Today, if you will stand as a great town financially, our infrastructure is great, thanks to past councils. Our town is one of the most desired places to live on the Iron Range. Recently, we have seen events beginning to come back with our Independence Day celebration, which, by the way, I know from experience now, dump tanks actually hurt. <laughs> they do. Um, our beach blast was amazing, and our annual Halloween events every year are amazing. Um, our small businesses continue to provide for our communities. Recently, one was awarded Small Business of the Year by the Laurentian Chamber of Commerce. Our town has so much going for it, and let's build on that. Um, if we all give a little, our community gains a lot. Let's bring back that spirit, and let's bring back that unity. Let's not leave the best times in the past, let's make the best times our future. Let's be proud to live in the greatest town in the country, Buell, Minnesota. And I put this in here, my wife said not to because I'm repeating myself, but in closing, no matter the outcome of these elections, I would encourage everybody to celebrate the fact we live in a country where we have the opportunity to choose our representatives. Every vote cast writes a piece of our country's history. Thank you. residents of Buell and those watching the replay on cable television. Thank you to all, including the Senior Citizen Board, for allowing me to share my history and vision with you. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm John Clerch, current mayor of Buell. I grew up in Buell with my family, consisting of my father, John Clerch Sr., who worked for the city, my mother, Patricia, Patricia Clerch, a longtime kindergarten teacher at the Buell School, and my sister, Julie. I'm a graduate of Martin Hughes School in Buell, Giving Community College, Bemidji State University, University of Minnesota Duluth in, uh, with a master's degree in education and finally a specialist degree in educational administration from the University of Minnesota Duluth. My professional career began in 1973 as a special education social studies work experience coordinator for the handicapped and disadvantaged as well as being head football, volleyball, track and assistant basketball coach. Finally ending up as a junior and senior high school principal at the Reamer Longville school system. In 1986, I became the elementary, junior high, and superintendent at the Nashua Kewatin School District. In, 19, or in 2007, I was hired as the elementary principal and superintendent at Mount Iron Buell. Also during the 2007 through 2016 years, I was the superintendent here at Masabi Academy in Buell as part of my duties with the Mount Iron Buell School District. <clears throat> during that time, I successfully negotiated over 100 contracts in my career, which is essential part of being a mayor in a small town. I have the following educational leadership experiences and civic experiences, starting with representing Region 7A on the Minnesota State High School League, 20 plus year board member on the Range Association of Municipalities and Schools, RAMS, former board chair and current board member of the Northland Learning Center and Special Education Cooperative, current member of the District 27-28 Superintendent Committee, current board member of the Arrowhead Regional Computing Consortium, current member of the North East Service Cooperative and Regional Health Insurance Committee Chair. I was a founding father for the Itasca Area Collaborative and former board member of Educational Innovative Partners. I have the following city governmental leadership experiences. Current Range Mayor's Committee member, represent Buell on the Central Iron Range Sanitary Sewer District Committee, represent Buell on the St. Louis County Development Block Grant Committee, CDDG, which did give us money to remodel this fine facility. And that um, I'm also still an alternate to the Range Association of Municipalities and Schools. Former educational accomplishments, two-time award winner of the Governor Rudy Perpich Educational Accomplishment Award, graduate of the Ar uh, Arise Program, Alliance for Renewal and Special Education Fellowship Program, received the Minnesota State Service Cooperative Outstanding Service Award, successfully passed four operating school levies, totaling over $50 million in Minnesota, and funding for two different vocational centers in Nashua, Kewatin, and successfully obtained $36 million in funding for a new modern Bill school complex. I believe I am the best candidate for mayor based on my extensive experience and involvement 
in the community and I, uh, that I have mentioned. Additionally, Bill has accomplished the following during my four years as mayor. We've completed $8,000 infrastructure work of phase one of a larger $11 million project, including a new water tank in the same design as our current water tank, along with extending utilities to our South Industrial Park to attract many new businesses to build. The current project included new roads, sidewalks, upgraded alleys, water lines, but most importantly, new sewer lines that have significantly reduced stormwater runoff and groundwater intrusion into our system, which has led to higher past utility bills. We are already realizing the lower utility costs from this new sewer system that we've established. Helped make the move from the St. Louis County Sheriff coverage to the Chisholm Police Department, which has resulted in more daily coverage and quicker response time. Helping the city secure a new eight-year agreement with Minnesota Power to significantly control the electric rates of residents right now and into the future. Partnered with Habitat for Humanity to build two houses this year and three more in the next two years on vacant lots, once again helping reduce taxes and utility costs for residents. Relocating the recycling to a more secluded but close and accessible area on the edge of town so that recyclable overflow would not make a mess in town. Paid off the city's tax increment financing tip for Artesian Estates two years early, which brings that tax base back to the city once again to help reduce tax taxes to all local homeowners. We installed surveillance cameras placed around the entrances and built to assist law enforcement and also be a proactive defense to potentially stop illegal activities before they start through the presence of cameras. They can also be used in locating missing citizens and assist and stop child abductions. Eight, arranging for upgrading of obsolete city vehicles that include the greater fire truck and riding lawnmower. Help facilitate the sale of the former Martin Hughes K-12 school after many a successful attempts to find new tenants, saving taxpayers $120,000 yearly. Facilitating the sale of 10 city lots around Southern Pit that were undeveloped for almost 20 years. New housing has already begun, which will help reduce taxpayer utility costs and utility costs for all residents starting in another year. Facility facilitated replacing the Meds One Ambulance Service by negotiating an agreement with Essential Health Services to provide a much improved local basic life support system, but also an advanced life support system, which is a top of the line in emergency care and is the city has never had that before. Work closely with County Commissioner Jurgovich to put a sidewalk on the short stops on the west side of Forest Street for pedestrian safety, including a crosswalk to the assisted living and nursing home which will happen next summer. As a member of the CDBG St. Louis County Block Development Block Grant, help facilitate an award of $48,000 to remodel this fine establishment. Help facilitate funding for a new heating system for City Hall and older fire hall, replacing the ceiling and removing asbestos from the current city hall. Work with the IRRB and St. Louis County HRA Housing Redevelopment to develop 10 new housing units in Davian 2 Edition, of which five lots are currently sold with construction to start in the spring will also reduce all resident utility bills and taxes. If re-elected, I would like to accomplish the following goals. <clears throat> Number one, replace the current water tank with an exact replica. Two, extend utilities, water, sewer, and power to the South Industrial Park for major business expansion. Three, combine the current fire hall ambulance fire hall and city garage into a public safety building at no cost to the taxpayers. This would also reduce city expenditures by reducing utility costs, water, heating, and power through energy conservation measures. The city would also access much needed general fund revenues for the sale of the two fire halls in the city garage, which we would no longer need. As you can see, the city has accomplished quite a bit over the last four years and continue to be, continues to be financially responsible in the process. We have uh, increased the money we have in our general fund each of the years I've been mayor. Um, based on my previous life and work experiences and accomplishments as mayor, I ask for your vote to support a proven leader. Please vote for John Clare for mayor. Thank you. And I approve this message. <laughs> election will be held here on November 8th. I do have a sample ballot. 
copy of it. <laughs> Good luck to all your candidates, and thank you, everyone, for coming. <laughs>